like to invite Sam Kerr to the stage. Sam Kerr is the only young person from Dumfries and Galloway to hold the position of Scottish Youth Parliament Chair and has spent much of her life fighting for LGBT rights and equalities. Sam has been involved in a wide range of activism and ensuring young people are involved in democracy. Okay. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit first about why I'm here because I'm a bit, over here, a bit confused. So the reason I was asked to come here today was to talk to you about, about the journey that young people can go on from being a young person to actually being somebody who makes something happen. Because I bet you're all sitting here thinking, yeah, but I'm just a young person. What difference can I actually make in the world? So I'm probably a really good example of someone who was just, just like you. I was just a young person who just wanted something to change. So today I'm here to talk about what happens if you go to something like this and then go, well, actually, what if I do do something? So, yeah, I'm not a young person anymore. I'm a bit too old for that, just a bit. I'm someone who still really believes passionately in young people, though, so that's why I'm here. But, like I say, I started just, out, just like you. I was 13 years old, just coming 14, and something really horrible had happened to my friends, and it wasn't right. And there was no way of fixing it, because there was no provision for that. There was no service about that. It was a back a really long time ago when we weren't allowed to talk, talk about LGBT issues. There was a thing called Section 28. None of you will probably ever have heard of that, but it's basically a piece of law that meant you weren't allowed to talk about LGBT issues. And schools or in centres like Oasis and stuff like that, or any of the youth work provision that we provide. And so there was nobody to turn to. And so I felt a bit like, well, what do you do about that? Who do you turn to? So we went to youth workers and it was a bit like, they can't do anything. Their hands were tied. So somebody had to turn around and say, well, let's change that. And that pen person ended up being me. I didn't intend for that person to be me. Not necessarily started out that way, but I was passionate enough about it. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you guys can't be passionate enough about something to make that change happen. So I didn't come from a specialist background. I was just a regular young person who just wanted to change something. Um, I really, really hated seeing inequalities. I don't know if you will understand this when I say this, but there's different types of inequalities in the inequality strand. So we talk about LGBT issues, we talk about disability issues, talk about ageism, sexism, are these kind of words that you will have heard? Nod if you agree, yeah? So you might have heard of these talked about today. Some of these issues are the things that we would call inequalities. Seeing people having a difference, people being treated unfairly, people not being given the rights that they deserve, people not being given the spaces that they deserve, the treatment that they deserve, people being treated wrongly. That was something I was passionate about. And so because of that, I decided, well, let's do something about it. So I badgered youth workers. <laughs> and I started a youth group. And back then, it was called Phoenix Youth Group. Had anybody ever heard of Phoenix LGBT Youth Group? Yep, quite a few of you. Yep, that's because it still runs today. So something I did, in 2001, so we're talking 17 years ago. Something I did 17 years ago, when I was 13, yeah, that shows you how old I am, sorry. <laughs> Something I did all the way back then, is still working now, because young people still need it. But I was determined that young people wouldn't have to go through what I went through, and what my, young, like my friends went through as young people, because we didn't have anywhere to turn. Like it said in the little introduction that Derry and Emily gave you, I've spent my life fighting for inequal to end inequalities and fighting for LGBT inequalities. I used that to then sort of get involved in an organisation called LGBT Youth Scotland. Some of you might have heard of that. There's one in Defrees, but they're actually a national organisation. And through them and through a lot of the work that um, the youth work team here do, I got involved in doing a lot of training and learning about different inequalities about different types of training, about different ways to make change happen. That sounds really tedious, 
but actually a lot of it was really good fun. A lot of it was like residentials, opportunities to meet new people, um, learning about actually my rights, because I think that's probably one of the biggest keys that you could ever discover. I don't know if you'll understand this. Some of you might, some of you might not. Some of you might be a little bit young yet. But when you talked to, when Bruce was talking last, the last person that was up on the stage doing a speech, Bruce is the children's commissioner. Now, I don't know if he told you this, because I didn't see his speech, sadly. But the only person that can fire Bruce is the Queen. He is a really, really powerful man, and his job is to ensure that young people's rights are protected in Scotland. And this thing, did any of you see this out there? Yeah. Yeah, this thing is really, like, the key. Absolutely vital. This unlocked so much things for me. And for so many young people all across Scotland. Because this gives you your rights. Every young person in this room has these rights. In fact, every young, people, every young person in nearly all of the world, not quite all of the world, but every young person in nearly all of the world has the rights in this document set in, in this. And you can use these rights to mean that when you've not got adequate things, that you can then use these rights to get them. And I'm not meaning like you can use these rights to get £100 Nike trainers. No, you can't. But when it's stuff like a need for a democratic voice, a need for privacy, a need for information, this. That's what helped me in the very first place. There was no service, there was no information, there was no... All these things were things that schools and services were failing young people. So we used this. And now we have a service that's running 17 years later. And that ethos is also integrated into pretty much everything that the team that are running today do. Because it became part of what everybody did. Because it was, well, why should we discriminate against people? Of course we shouldn't discriminate against people. Of course we should just accept everybody as equal. So I went on that journey, started Phoenix, got involved in LGBT Scotland. You think, well, that's still just like going to events like this. But through doing that, I then got elected onto the National Youth Council for LGBT Scotland. So that's where the point where you then, it's not just me, I'm not just there for me. I'm then one person representing like a whole big group of people like you. That's a bit scary. So I've then got to listen to all of your voices and then take that and then feed that back into a big national organisation and try and make sense out of it and represent every single one of yours. So if you can imagine, if I was to ask every single one of you, do you like Kit Kats? Everybody would totally have a different viewpoint. But it might be quite similar, but it might not all be the exact same answer. I've got to try and, con would have to try and concise all of that into one answer and say, yes, we sort of like Kit Kats. So that everybody's answer was sort of getting heard. But that got a bit scarier because from that, I went from representing all the, so that's effectively all the LGBT young people in Davies and Galway I was representing, to then being elected to the Scottish Youth Parliament. Now, have you heard of the Scottish Youth Parliament? Yeah, there are banners somewhere over there, I've seen it. So the Scottish Youth Parliament is the, basically the Scottish Government's version of youth democracy. And I became their qualities, which, it was quite obvious it's going to happen. I became the Equalities Convener of Scottish Youth Parliament five days after being elected to the Parliament, which was quite daunting. So when you become the Convener of a, a committee, it's, you're not just a regular member where you are like, like representing all the people on Davies and Galloway, all the young people on Davies and Galloway, which is really daunting because it's, what's the current statistic? Is it about 66,000 you're representing? Something like that? You're about 66,000? No, 32,000. Yeah, 32,000, sorry by bad my maths. So 32,000 roughly you're representing, something like that. And then, no, that's in total. It doesn't matter, ignore my maths. You're representing a lot of people. And you've got to concise that and then represent that back into the whole of the Scottish Youth Parliament. But then you then become the convener of a whole committee and then have to focus that whole committee back into the board of, the board of, um, Chairs, so you basically sit on the board that runs the whole of the Scottish Youth Parliament. So you're then not just a young person, you're then a trustee of a company. And that company then has a turnover of half a million pounds a year.
but it's not because it's a, tra it's a charity. But it's a big, scary thing. I was only, I think I was 21 at the time. So it's a big, scary thing. So I did that. I did that for a year and a half. And that, the whole purpose of me doing that was because, I, again, I wanted to take another step up the ladder to try and end inequalities. I met with the Scottish Parliament, Scottish Government and stuff, because I wanted to make change happen. I wanted to do things that would actually try and improve things for LGBT young people. And that was the start of the Equal Marriage Campaign. From doing that, when I was chair of the Equalities Convener, well, Equalities Convener, that was when we started the Equal Marriage Campaign. And it was the person that took over that communityship after me that pushed it through. So that was quite cool. Um, and then from doing SYP, I then moved on to doing stuff like local stuff. So I went from when I was doing that, I went on to do some local stuff. So um, there was a really horrible point where it looked like there was going to be um, loads of services shut in. So I was part of a group of people that helped organise trying to protest to keep our services um, open and try and organise young people to find out how we would get our rights and how we would protect our services and how we would keep our staff because we loved our staff, we loved our buildings, we wanted them to still be running today, which they are, and how we would go about doing that and how we make that happen because our staff couldn't help us and it was so that you guys still had services today which you do. So somebody had to do that, and it had to be young people, and it had to be us. So it was those kind of things that I had to do. And then from doing that, I went on to do good hoodies. Sam Kerr, other Sam Kerr, who's at the back. I don't know if you've seen her. She's walking around in a bright yellow hoodie today. That is a good hoodie. I'm not going to make her stand up yet. Yep. So that's a good hoodie. That's what a good hoodie looks like. A good hoodies was a sort of project that was to basically get young people out in hoodies in the community doing good deeds to try and change the perception of young people in the community so that young so that the community would realize that young people weren't a threat because young people were not a threat young people weren't a threat we were trying to actually help people but because we were wearing hoodies we were seen as the, the, the big media campaign that we were thugs and stuff now I'll tell you something that's quite embarrassing now. I would not do it again. But I met the Queen in a goodie hoodie, genuinely, to prove the point that young people are not thugs, we're not hard, we're not horrible, that actually we're just young people. It's just an item of clothing. It doesn't tell you anything about us, or anyone not us, because I'm not old, I'm too old now. But it doesn't tell you anything about who you are. It's just an item of clothing. So, I, yeah, I met the Queen in a goodie hoodie. But I would do it again because, yeah, it's bright yellow and yeah, no. <laughs> um, and then pretty much straight after that, I got elected to be chair of the Scottish Parliament, which was pretty amazing. Um, I wasn't actually representing Dupuis and Galway, even though I was from, I am from Dupuis and Galway, born and bred here, lived here all my life. I was representing LGBT in Scotland, but I was spent all my time with Rona and the LGBT, the, the, the Dupuis and Galway crew, even though I was there for um, LGBT in Scotland. But at the same time, knew a lot of the issues that are faced with and Galway because same thing. I was still representing young people from and Galway as a constituency MSP, well, not constituency MSP, but representing them through LGBT Scotland and the constituency and knowing fine well that it was a rural area and the issues that we were having. But then, yeah. So I was still having to face all of that. Being chair of the Scottish Youth Parliament is possibly the most difficult thing I've ever done in my life. But at the same time, possibly the most rewarding thing I could ever, ever, ever accomplish, ever. Because as chair of the Scottish Youth Parliament, you're not in an organisation where you have staff above you. You are a young person sat at the top of a table and you have staff underneath you. So you're the boss. There's nobody above you. You're in charge. You have staff underneath you. And so you make all the decisions and then other people underneath you then have to follow that order. I think if you turn around and said, let's all give up for the day and eat jam donuts, they might say, that's not the wisest decision, we should probably do some work. But in theory, you could turn around and say, let's give up for the day and eat jam donuts. Um, but at the same time, it was a really amazing experience. And it's one of those things that I don't think anyone ever thought that someone from LGBT youth would ever do that because it's a charity. No one really had ever done that as a charity before. And I don't think anybody ever thought that someone from Dovies and Galloway 
would ever be chair of the Scottish Youth Parliament because the Peace and Galloway doesn't usually like get recognised for stuff like that. So it was amazing to actually achieve that. And it's amazing to see so many young people here from like Indo Peace and Galloway at a democracy event. It's amazing. But this is the last couple of things I want to say. I was inspired by people, not necessarily famous people, but people that were like just like me and you. I wasn't inspired by the people that were like famous people to do things like that. I was inspired by people that were sat next to me that were getting put down by things day in, day out, that had been through really hard things, but that had got back up. And that were still just like, yeah, I'm gonna push on and I wanna keep changing things. There's some people that I saw who had been through really hard things, but still got up and wanted to make things better for other people, and still do. And we're still just like, do you know what? Actually, I'll put other people first. I want to change people's lives. I want to make things better for other people and do frequently. And some of like, my, my biggest inspiration is my mum because my mum never gave up fighting, ever. Her thing was always that everybody should have fairness. And I still believe that. But it doesn't have to be someone. We look at all these famous people and we think they're the inspiration, but not necessarily. It doesn't have to be. It could be the person sitting next to you. And it doesn't necessarily, you don't have to be someone famous to also be someone that can make change happen. You could be Joe Boggs, you could be the person sitting next to you. If you think about it, the curling rink that sat across the road from where we are now has Olympic medalists training in it, has had Olympic medalists training in it. The school that was here before this had Olympic medalists attend it. Did they know that they were going to be Olympic medalists before they went there? No, they didn't. So why can't it be one of you? Why does it have to be somebody else if the person that changes things or can achieve something? So on that note, take the things that you've learned today. Today was a really good chance for you to have learned something. You have had some amazing people come in and talk to you about things, to inspire you, to give you some tools to take away. Use those as building blocks to go away and make a change happen. If that's what you want to do, not all of you will want to, but if that's what you want to do, if that's that little fire inside of you, use it to take, make that change happen and then go and build on it. There's support there. There's, there's groups, there's tools, like, there's all sorts of stuff. But make that change happen. Don't wait for it to be somebody else. It doesn't need to be somebody else. It can be you. It's up to you guys now. Like, that's it. It can't always be like the next people. It's you guys now. We're waiting for you guys to do it. Okay. Thanks, guys. <laughs>